Yeah, 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 yeah. I grew up in a time where mama and daddy and grandmama and them would say, I plead the blood. Just kind of look at somebody and tell them, I plead the blood. Over your house, over your family, over your home, over your children. Tell somebody, I plead the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Now, Father, we bless and praise and magnify your name. We give you glory. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your will. Thank you for your word being accomplished in our lives. So we stand to preach your word now. Would you cover us in the blood of Jesus? Cover our hearts, souls, minds, our ears that we can receive. Hello, Pray now that you would touch all my cassette that all me answer. Speak through these lips of clay. Use me as only you can. The words that I shall speak be all of thine and not of mine. All of thee and not of me. Have your way now. So your word in power and demonstration of power and then let it be confirmed with signs following. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank God and amen. So you stand with us for the reading of the word of the Lord. One verse from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 27. Psalm number 27 and verse 13, you find these words, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You may be seated. <laughs> I had fainted. You notice that it does not say I would have fainted. The tense of the Hebrew verb it's past tense. I had fainted. But the thing that revived me, the thing that restored me, the thing that gave me back my life is that I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want to talk this morning for just a few moments about believing to see. It's an interesting concept because most people have to see to believe. But for the believer, we believe until we see it. And I came to talk to somebody this morning who has been in a season where your faith has been challenged. Where both God and the devil have come into agreement on one thing. And that one thing is that it's going to take faith to bring you out. God has had you seemingly in a holding pattern while the enemy has brought you into a place called onslaught, into a place called attack. And it seems as if the only thing that has gotten you through is that you still believe. I want to talk to somebody who will understand that you can't see it first. For we walk by 
faith. Second Corinthians 5 and 7, and not by sight. Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us now, faith is the substance. The word in the Greek is hypostasis. It's that upon which we stand. It's a setting under. It's a foundation. It's the substance. Faith holds up where I stand. It's the substance. I can't see what's under this platform. But if something wasn't holding it up, I would have fallen through. I would have collapsed. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Now, faith is the sub. It's the stuff that my life and my belief and my trust and my confidence in God is made of. It's the it's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence the evidence the eyewitness testimony, the evidence, the <laughs> exhibit one, exhibit two, exhibit three, exhibit four, exhibit five. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. It's the evidence. It's it's the it's the preponderance of evidentiary testimony that has convinced my soul that whatever my life is going through, God has me. Now faith is the substance of things, hope or the evidence of things <laughs> that I cannot see. I wish I had somebody who would just lean on your neighbor and tell them no matter what you're going through, I came to tell you this morning, you got to keep believing until you see it. Whatever it is that you're trusting God for, you got to keep believing until you see it. So, so I want to share with you three things. I want to share, first of all, that in order to understand this concept of faith, in order to understand this concept of what we call believing, uh, the first thing you have to do is you got to understand the principles of faith. Look at somebody and say, you got to understand the principles of faith. And uh, I'm sure that this list is not exhaustive, but I just want to give you three principles that hopefully will help you uh, walk through this week. Principle number one, faith and sight are always in opposition to each other. <laughs> I think I better say that again. Look at somebody and say, faith and sight are always in opposition to each other. In other words, whatever it is that you're believing God for, the enemy is always going to show you the opposite. Faith and sight are always in opposition to each other. Uh, yeah, watch this. Come here. Sight operates in the realm of the flesh. And sight is based upon fact. Here we go. This is, this is the problem. This is the problem. Sight operates in the realm of the flesh, and it, it's based upon fact. Hmm? You ever planted a seed? And the fact is, that's all it is. Because <laughs> that's all you see. But, but when you bought the seed, it came in a bag. And on the front of the bag was a picture of that seed's future. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And uh, when, when, when you take the seed out of the bag, uh, it's a fact that it's just a seed. 
But my faith says that my harvest is hid in uh, my harvest is hid inside the seed. So, so what, what you have to understand, child of God, is that in order to operate in this realm called faith, uh, you cannot get caught up in facts. Yeah. Tell somebody, in order for faith to overcome facts, I've got to look beyond what I see and envision what I cannot see. And I came to talk to about four or five people in here this morning who can't see it yet. But it's on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at somebody and say, what you see will always contradict what you believe. Mm-hmm. So here we go. Principle number two. Watch this. Faith always requires me to overcome a lie. (laughs) See, that's why most of us, most of us just operate in church faith. Church faith means I, I have faith as long as I can shout over it. Church faith means I have faith as long as I can dance over it. Church faith means I have faith as long as the choir is singing, as long as the preacher is preaching, then my faith works. But I want to tell somebody that God's about to shift you this morning from church faith to kingdom faith. He's about to, he's about to shift you from a faith that is dependent upon an atmosphere to a faith that is predicated simply on what he said. Somebody shout, shift. I was uh, driving the other day. I probably shouldn't share this testimony, but I'm going to. I was driving, and I was about to get on to the freeway. Just as I was getting on to the freeway, the person who was in the right-hand lane, looked as if they were going to let me on, but when they looked and saw me, they, they speeded up. Y'all, they go, <laughs> they speeded up uh, seemingly intentionally not to let me in. You can put all those pieces together. But typically when I'm driving, I'm driving in the mode that says E the economy mode because it uses let's gas. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But when I saw that he was not going to let me in, I pushed the little button that, that, that transforms from E to S. It's the sports mode. Y'all shall I my course And when I pushed the S, within moments, I was in front of him. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And I, I wasn't mean. I just waved bye-bye. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And I came to tell somebody, God is about to shift you out of the mode called E because you've been operating in the earthly realm. And he's about to shift you in the S, not sports, but spiritual mode. You're about to operate in the realm of the spirit that's gonna take you far beyond folk that have been trying to stop you. Trying to keep you from getting on. Look at somebody and tell them the devil's been in my lane long enough. But this is what God said to me, Chris. He said, you can't operate in the realm of believing without first having to go past a lie. And when God spoke it to me, I was like, okay, it sounds good, but I'm, and, and he, he said, write down the word believe, B-E-L-I-E-V-E, he said, write it again, B-E, 
L-I-E, B-E, he said, right again, B-E, L-I-E, y'all gonna get it in a minute. He said, now separate it. I wish I had somebody. And right in the middle of everything I'm believing for is a lie. Write it down. B-E hyphen L-I-E hyphen V-E. I'm trying to get past the lie. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. The lie that says what you can't have. The lie that says what you can't do. The lie that says what you can't accomplish. The lie that says what you can't become. Look at somebody and say it's a lie. Watch this. When Satan wanted to turn Eve's faith, all he did was told her a lie. Lord, I wish I had five people. How many lies have stopped you from getting to where God is trying to take you? How many lies? See, now here's the issue, and I don't know if we have any, any former liars in the house. Don't wave your hand. Don't wave, don't, shh, don't wave your hand. Don't, shh, don't wave your hand. But, but, but in order for you to lie well, the lie has to be believable. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. That's why most real good lies are sandwiched in truth. Has God not said? Well, now, since you know what he said, then the fact that you know what he said gives credibility to what you're about to see. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And, and, and I want to tell somebody that the devil has been lying to you. And the only reason you believe it is because he keeps quoting scriptures out of context. I think I feel like preaching for just a few moments. Look at somebody and say this morning. I'm going to expose every lie. Everything the devil told me, I, I, I come to strip it. I come to undress it. Everything that the enemy said, I wish I had somebody. It's been, it's been hindering my actions. It's been clouding my mind. It's been affecting my attitude. But I made up in my mind today, look at somebody and say, every lie is going down. Yeah. Yeah. So principle... Number two is that faith always requires me to overcome and get past the lie. Here we go. Principle number three. This is where it gets hard. Faith requires me to deny or to contradict what I feel. Yeah, I'm coming to your house. Because cause everything you feel, if what you feel contradicts the word then your feeling <laughs> is a lie y'all y'all don't like my teaching here we go when I'm operating in faith the first thing that happens is I feel fear anybody ever been there lift your hands if you be honest with me I have false evidence that affects my reality. Now, now, the fear is real, but the evidence is false. See, I know that because the evidence is in my faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence, y'all ain't going to talk to me. But, but the problem is, the fear comes not from what I believe, but the fear comes from what I see. Can I teach? Now, here we go. I move from fear to doubt. Can I dissect it for you? Doubt is the promise Divided by time. Which means, Elder David, 
I used to believe. But because it has taken so long, the promise now feels like a lie. So now I'm operating in the realm of doubt because I know what he said, but he didn't tell me how long it was going to take. I came out of the wilderness. It was supposed to be an 11 day journey. But it's been 40 years. And so now I'm doubting in the wilderness. Because I thought I was entering into the place called the promised land. Can I, can I talk? Watch this. See this is the way the feelings work. I moved from fear to doubt, and then I moved from doubt to unbelief. Now, unbelief is expectation divided by experience. You're going to catch it in a minute. Man brings his son to Jesus. He is tormented by the devil. And when he gets there, expecting to find Jesus, he finds his disciples because Jesus is gone. Jesus is up in the mountain of transfiguration with three of the disciples while the other nine are down in the valley. The man comes to the nine. And when he comes to them, he says, can you heal my son? You with me? Come here. They pray, anoint him with oil, and nothing happens. And for most of us, that's when we leave. But the man decides to hang out. Because he knows that Jesus sooner or later is going to come back. When Jesus shows back up, the boy has not changed, still wallowing on the ground, throwing himself in the fire, throwing himself in the water. And he says, I brought him to your disciples to heal him, and they could not. Look at somebody and say, that's been my experience. You've been having folk pray for you who couldn't get a prayer through. You've been having folk prophesy to you and the things they said never came to pass. So here you are now. You are a believer operating in the realm of unbelief. But Bishop, that sounds oxymoronic. It sounds paradoxical. I don't understand. How can you be a believer and operate in the realm of unbelief? Here you go. Lord, I believe. Help that. They go talk to me. My unbelief, because because my expectation has been hindered and hampered and diluted by my past experience. And experience. Messed me up. It didn't stop me from going to church. <laughs> didn't stop me from singing in the choir. Didn't stop me from paying my tithes, giving my offering. Didn't stop me from coming every Sunday. But the truth is, my expectation is different. Because I've been operating in an area called unbelief. Anybody ever been there? And every time you pray, if you be honest with yourself, you don't pray with the same zeal. (laughs) You don't pray with the same level of faith because it's like, I made up my mind, baby, I ain't going to, you know, last time I went all in. 
And them church, that's what a whole lot of y'all talking about. You know, I just can't stand church folk. You ain't got a problem with church folk. You got a problem with those church folk. Aren't you glad that that man didn't, didn't say, I got a problem with all the disciples? It was just those nine. And for some of you, the only thing that's been going on is you've been hanging out with the wrong nine. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Look, look at somebody and, and, and ask them, which nine have you been hanging out with? Yeah. See, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I come to a place of unbelief because I'm struggling. Now, now, now here we go. Dr. Nikki, you can, you can help me with this. Um, there are certain diseases that are called autoimmune diseases because literally what begins to happen is the immune system those of you that are in the, the medical field watch me come here I, I ain't been to medical school but watch this I got a revelation the immune system begins to attack itself there are certain things that are that are built into your faith that are supposed to protect you. But the question is, watch this, what do I do when what I believe is being attacked by what I feel? What do I do when the things that I have believed all the time look like they're not working. And so you keep coming to church feeling some kind of way. Because I'm shouting, I'm dancing, I'm preaching, I'm praying, I'm giving. I, I, as far as I know, there's nothing in my heart against anybody. But this thing just ain't working. Can I teach for just a moment? Uh huh. And, 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 well, let me see if I can explain it like this. Uh, Ephesians 2 and 8 says that I am saved through grace by faith. But there are times when I don't feel saved. Anybody been there this week? Look at somebody and say, there are times when I don't feel saved. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. You are not saved because of how you feel. You are saved because you believe. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk you through this. Give, give, me, give, me, give, me, give me about eh, 15, 20 minutes, 15, 17 minutes. We, we, we out of here, but I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Watch this, watch this. Look at somebody and, and say the word of God says, that he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was laid upon him, and with his stripes, watch this. Come in, come in, come in. I am healed. But there are times when I don't feel healed. There are times that the pain is excruciating and, uh, and the symptoms are present. I, I don't feel healed. What do you do when what you feel is attacking what you believe? Then here you come. You, you go to a place, you got, you got fear, you got doubt, you got unbelief. Uh, yeah, watch this. And, and then, then you come to a place called panic. Let, can I take a poll? How many believers in here have had moments of panic? Lift your hands real high. Wave at me. That's almost everybody except the three of y'all that's lying. Yeah. Yeah. Because panic is, watch this, personal anticipation of a nearly immediate calamity. Panic! 
then it says, everything is about to fall apart. Now, I said it's personal, watch this, because most of us don't panic for other folk. You only panic when it's personal. As long as there's other folk, you know, like, you just got to believe God. Stand on faith. Trust him. Hallelujah. But when it's you, am I right or wrong? When it's your rent, when it's your house note, when it's your car note, when it's your children, when it's your grandchildren, it's real easy to talk. Y'all ain't going to talk to me about what other folk ought to do until it hits your house. Panic says I got a deadline that I can't meet. Can I teach? But here, here's the lie. Watch this. Here's the lie. Here's the lie. If you had a deadline and you're still here, then the deadline was a lie. Somebody's going to catch it in a minute. See, because what the deadline by definition is that once I cross this line, Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm dead, everything I'm... <laughs> but, but there are folk in this room who have had deadlines that have come and gone. But you're still here. You've heard me tell the story of Mother Susan Davis, who was a member of our church for years. And, 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 and I was in my uh, infancy of pastoring. I think maybe I've been pastoring one or two years. And, and so, you know, I didn't have but just a few members. And, and, and so every member uh, that went through something, I'm like, I'm here. Right? You ain't got but 10. You can be there, right? And, and, and so Mother Davis came to me one day, and, and she said, uh, Pastor, I, 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 my light bill is due, and I want you to pray for me. And I said, well, mama, how much is your bill? She told me how much it was. And uh, I said, well, you know, why don't we just help you pay it? And and she said, baby, I didn't ask you to pay it. I just asked you to pray. Mama had more sense than I did. I was a little young pastor trying to, trying to do right. And, and uh, I said, well, mama, let me just pay the bill. I got ready to write the check. And the Holy Ghost said, no, I'm trying to show you something. And so I looked at her. I said, mama, Holy Ghost told me I can't pay. She looked at me. She laughed. She said, she laughed like, <laughs> she said, I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you to pay it. I just asked you to pray. And so for several weeks, every time Mother Davis would come to church, I, I said, Mother, uh, did you uh, get the light bill paid? She said, no, not yet. And, and, and she'd just be praising God. And I said, well, Mother, I, I still don't mind helping. She said, I know, baby. And she called me baby. I know, baby, but I just want you to pray. And so several weeks went, and every, every week when I saw her, the answer was still the same. Mama, did you get the light bill? I said, no, uh, baby, I, I, ain't, I ain't worried about that bill. She said, they told me they're going to turn the lights off, but the light's still on. Y'all, they go hit me now. Bow. About a month, month and a half, two months, three months went by. And, and so one day I asked her, I said, Mama, did you ever get that light bill paid? She said, no, baby, but the light's still on. We went probably six months, and every week I'd ask, I'd say, Mama, did you get a light bill paid? I'd say, you know, because we still on my head. She said, baby, I didn't ask you to pay it. I just asked you to pray. She said, the light's still on. And, and one Sunday, glory to God, she came in shouting. And, and any of y'all who've ever been around real old, sanctified folk, uh, they kind of shout like this. Don't look like they're moving. Just shout like this. She came in scooting down the aisle. The room didn't seat but about 50, so she didn't have far to come. She came, <laughs> she came in scooting down the aisle. And, and when she came in, uh, uh, I said, Mama, what's going on? I said, did you get the light bill paid? She said, no, baby, I forgot about that bill. She said, but the other day, a little white boy came by the house, and he told me he wanted to check on my lights. And, and, and I said, yeah, everything's fine. And she said, uh, he told me, he said, no, Miss Davis, you don't have no lights in this house. And, and I told him, I sure do. <laughs> Mother Davis had great faith. She, she, said, she said, I brought him in and, you know, gave him some water because it was kind of hot. She said, and I flipped the switch and the light came up. She said, that boy turned red. His eyes got about that big. And, and he took me out in the back. And, and you know, Pastor, they had taken my meter. 
Y'all ain't gonna help me now. She said, I didn't have no meter, but I still had lights. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I came to prophesy to somebody to tell you that God is able to the stuff that the world said you needed, if you don't have it, he's still done. Y'all ain't going to help me look at somebody and say the deadline was a lie. Yeah. yeah. Anybody here ever had a deadline that God let you go past just to show you that he was still God? Hallelujah. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Joshua 10 and 12, watch this. Uh, they're in the middle of a battle, and they're running out of time. Children of Israel have just entered into the promised land, and they've been attacked from every side. And, and Joshua's like... I believe we can win, <laughs> but we just need more time. Look at, look at somebody say, I believe God's going to do it. I just need a little more time. And when you read the text, it says, Then spake Joshua to the Lord. Touch somebody say, That's prayer. But he did it in. <laughs> Glory to God. In the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, he, he, he spoke to the Lord, but he did it publicly. Tell somebody that's public declaration. See, the problem with most of us is we pray, but we pray like in private because just in case the prayer don't work, we don't want nobody to know that that's what we were praying for. You wait till after everything work out. Say, Shh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was believing God for that. But did nobody know that's what you believe in God for? Watch me. Can I teach for just a minute? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And then, and then it says something real crazy. He said in the sight of Israel, tell us about it. He said it in public. He said, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. Now, now, there's something I want to show you real quickly here about faith, and I got to move. But, 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 but he prays publicly, but he's talking to the elements. Some of y'all got to stop talking to each other. <laughs> and there is a time, hear me now, when you even need to stop talking to God. And you got to talk to the thing that needs to change. Look at what he says. Watch me now. He says, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Now, if you look the word Gibeon up, it means the hill country. Look at somebody say, it's the high place. And this, this is what the Lord gave me, and so I wrote it down. He says, the volume of your faith has to be higher than the voice of your threat. Somebody missed it. I said, the volume of your faith has to be higher than the voice of your threat. Watch this. He says, I want you to stand still upon Gibeon. And then he talks to the moon and says, moon, I want you to stand still upon the valley of Agilon. Now, when you look up the word Agilon, this bless me, because the word Agilon literally means field of deer. And this is what God said. This is about 10 of y'all in here. He says, my faith has to be able to leap over time and space. In order to bring back what I'm believing God for. Have you ever seen a deer leap? When a deer leaps, that deer literally looks like it's in slow motion. And God says, tell somebody that he's getting ready to slow things down for you. In order to give you time to do what needs to be done. And in order to give you the victory. But the thing is, you got to quit talking to folk about it. 
Because most of us talk to people that can't do nothing. Why would I tell you I need money when you broke? Why would I tell you I'm depressed when you depressed too? Why would I tell you I'm frustrated when you just as frustrated as I, baby, I'm not trying to be rude, but you ain't the one I need to talk to right now. I need to talk to God, and when I talk to him, I wish I had somebody, and he gives me the release, now I'm going to talk to the elements. I'm going to talk to the things that have been standing in my way, and when I talk to it, God is going to back me up. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, here's the issue. Because I'm standing on the word of God, God's about to back up my word. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Isaiah 55 and 10 says his word shall not return unto him void. It's going to accomplish that which he has spoken. Here we go, here we go. And I'm, I'm going into the stretch now. Here we go, watch this. The remedy for panic and the result of faith is this. When I begin to decree and declare and talk to those situations, all of a sudden peace hits my life. <laughs> Philippians 4 and 7 says, but my God, hallelujah. Woo, he, he causes peace to come on me. And it's the peace of God that passes all understanding. See, the problem with most of us is we can't operate in faith because we're trying to operate in the realm of understanding. And there are some times when God is doing something in your life, you have to suspend understanding. You got to say, God, I don't understand it, but I trust you. I don't know why you let me go through this, but I trust you. I don't know why this is happening, but I trust you. I wish I, I wish you touch three people and say, I still trust him. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Can I teach in here? <laughs> this is what the Lord said to me. Because he's been dealing with me about this this week, but about 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 1.30, 1.45 this morning, I thought I was like trying to rest. And he said, he said, write this down. And I, and I wrote something down that blessed me. He says, what's about to happen when I bring you to a place where I allow you to overcome panic as you're about to operate in a level of faith like you've never operated before? Because this is what happens. You have to confess what you believe. Hallelujah. Until what you feel becomes a lie. I said, God, I don't understand. He says, you, you, got to, you have to confess that what you feel is a lie and that what you believe is truth until truth speaks so loudly that your subconscious mind can't even hear the lie no more. I know you told me I had cancer, but I don't feel no cancer no more. I, don't, I wish I had somebody. I, I, I know I, I'm not going to keep rehearsing the diagnosis in my mind. Who am I talking to? I'm not going to keep rehearsing what they said because I believe the report of the last somebody. Whose report do you believe? When you come to the point where you believe it like that, peace hits your life. Folk around you don't say they're like, you ain't panicking. You ain't scared. No, no, baby. You, what you don't understand is greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So, so I know what they said, Jeremiah, but I'm just chilling. You know, I, now, 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 I can't tell you how it's going to happen. I, I can't tell you how God's going to do it. But one thing I know is grandmama said he may not come when you want him, but he is always on time. Uh, he'll either move the deadline or make the deadline not matter. Look at somebody and say, that's the kind of God I serve. All right. Let's, let's, let's move. Let's wrap this up. Look at somebody and say, you got to understand the principles of faith. But now, here we go. Number two, you got to understand the practice of faith. I'm almost finished. Watch this. 
And that's what the Lord said to me, mother. He says, first thing we fail to believe and understand is that faith always begins with confession. Anytime the devil gets you to say something that cancels or contradicts what you believe, then what you believe can't happen. I'm going to say it again. Anytime the devil gets you to say something that cancels or contradicts what you believe, then what you believe can't happen. How you know that, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he receives anything from the Lord. Look at somebody and say, part of the reason you ain't got nothing is because everything you say amounts to nothing. So the scripture says that when you come to the judgment, we will give account of every idle word. We've spoken out of my mouth. What is an idle word? Well, let me see. If you're sitting in your car and the engine is running and it's idling, where are you going? Look at somebody and say, you're going to be judged for every word that does not produce faith. <laughs> All right, let me wrap this up. Tell somebody, faith always begins with a confession. Romans 10 and 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Tell somebody it begins with a confession. Huh? Verse, verse 10 says, with the heart the man believeth. I wish I had somebody. But confession has to be made with what? With your mouth. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Tell somebody, don't nothing happen till, till you say it. Yeah, tell somebody, faith always begins with a confession. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, by faith we know that the worlds were framed. That, 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 that phrase, glory to God, in the Greek, it means held together. It means put in place. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The word of God is the glue that holds everything together. If you keep speaking the word, it ain't going to fall apart. If you keep speaking the word, it will stand forever. If you If I had time to tell you, I would show you how it works. Hallelujah. When you look at the creation story in Genesis chapter 1, watch this. Genesis chapter 1, glory to God. Verse 3, it says, and God said, <laughs> and there was. Verse 6, it says, and God said. Verse 9, it says, and God said. Verse 11, it says, and God said. Verse 14, it says, and God said. Verse 20, it says, and God said. Verse 24, it says, and God said. Verse 26, it says, and God said. Nothing happened until God said it. You're going to operate in the realm of faith as a believer. Look at somebody and say, you got to say something. You can't think it. You can't hope it. You can't even just believe it. Look at somebody say, you got to say it. Job 22 and 28 says, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. All right, here we go. I'm almost finished. Watch this. Secondly, your confession has to be followed up by conviction. Amen, amen, amen. That's it. Part of our problem is we say it, but we don't believe. Yeah, I'm believing God for healing, but I'm going down here to this funeral home and make some arrangements just in case. What the what? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, if I make funeral arrangements, and I do have them, but, but I made them when I was like really well. Because I didn't want walking through there to do something to my faith. Because I'm believing for the rapture. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know. Now, I got stuff picked out because, you know, I don't want to tell you the kids putting me in something I don't like. So I don't want them saying, you know, that costs too much. No. 
I'm paying for it, and I'm paying for it out of your money. Hallelujah. When you get your check, that part's already going to be gone. You're going to be saying, what? He paid that much? Y'all don't like my teaching. Look at somebody and say, your confession has to have conviction. See, part of our problem, child of God, listen to me. Come here, come here. Part of our problem is our faith has lost its passion. Because most of us in this room, you don't believe like you used to believe. It was that last disappointment. It's the fact that you still got stuff you believe in God for, and it's taken entirely too long. Like, I know he said the same yesterday, today, and forever, but dog, how long is forever going to take? Am I helping anybody? All right, here we go, here we go. When you believe with passion, you believe that God is going to back up your words. Where you find that in the Bible? I'm glad you asked. First Kings chapter 17, Elijah the Tishbite walks into King Ahab's court. This is what he said. He doesn't say one time, I've been praying. Not one time does he say, I've been going on a three-day fast and shut out of my side. And a 40-day, no, no, no. He said, look, I'm here on assignment. My faith has me in place, and there shall not be dew nor rain these years. Watch it. But according to my word. Is that what it said? See, when you operate in the realm of faith, I'm talking about, baby, you believe God's going to honor your word. You're like, all right, don't give me the raise if you want to. I promise you this, this joint going to shut down in three months. I don't care how many widgets y'all been selling a year. The whole factory going to shut down because the favor of God was on this place because I was here. Y'all ain't going to help me now. now. Now, let me walk if you want to. You must not know about me. See, I'm, I'm talking about a faith that, that, that has a level of conviction where you know his word is going to back up your word. And shut up, I call my seat. That's when I pray for God to heal folks. I don't keep on praying and, and like, you know, you know, Bishop ain't been to the hospital but one time. How many times it take? You don't come to church but once a month. How come you in the hospital three days think I ought to show up every day? No, I came and prayed and believed God for your healing. So I gave you a prayer cloth and an envelope. Y'all don't like my teaching. <laughs> I believe God as soon as he heal you. Glory to God. <laughs> Am I teaching in here? You got to understand the practice of faith. Watch this. Tell somebody, it begins with confession. It has to be followed by conviction. And, and then thirdly, watch this, it has to have a lifestyle of consecration and commitment of obedience to God. I don't care what you claim. If your lifestyle don't line up, it ain't going to work. You can't just quote scripture and not live scripture. The problem with this whole faith walk is many of us have chosen to use faith, glory to God, to manipulate God when we won't give him a lifestyle that he can honor. Uh, I think I better wrap this up. If I had time, we got to get out of here. I'd walk you through Hebrews 11. Maybe I'll do that next time. But in our text, <laughs> let me spend the last five minutes here. The psalmist, David says, the Lord is my light. 
and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He is the strength of my life. <laughs> of whom shall I be afraid? Look at somebody and say, that's my confession. <laughs> when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, I know they came against me, hallelujah, but, but, but they stumbled and fell. Look at somebody say, that's my confession. See, see, faith always begins with a confession. Can I teach for just a minute? Uh, but, but then he shifts gears to verse 3. He says, though an hole should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. Hallelujah. In this will I be uh, confident. Can I teach you? One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. Uh, God, can I teach? Look at somebody and say, your, your confession has to be followed by a conviction that no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to keep going to the house of God. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why you keep going? Why you keep? Why don't you quit? Why don't you? Uh, I go to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his every time I show up I see something that I didn't see before y'all ain't gonna talk to me uh, see see when you've been married like a long time and you're really in love you you just be looking at like girl I didn't know you had that mold there see see because every time you go you see something you didn't see before y'all ain't gonna talk to me look at somebody and say that's the way it is with God every time I come into his presence I see something I didn't see before I see goodness I didn't see before before. I see mercy I didn't see before. I see power that I didn't see before. Tell somebody that's my conviction. Yeah. In the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle. Uh, Shall he hide me? He shall set me up. Look at somebody and say, everything you've been going through, it ain't nothing but a setup. <laughs> Lord, help me here. Uh -huh. uh, and then, then he shifts from confession to conviction. And uh, uh, from conviction to a consecrated and committed lifestyle. He says, now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. And I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. If I had time, I would tell somebody that I don't praise him because I feel like it. I praise him because he deserves it. I don't uh, praise him because I got money last week. Uh, I wish I had ten folk. I don't praise him because I got a raise on my job. I praise him because he woke me up this morning. And the breath that I breathe belongs to God. I got I to gotta get out of here. I wasn't going to do this, but, but lean over and tell him. Tell your neighbor that when you trust him like that, he'll work for you like that. He goes on. He goes. He goes. Look at somebody say, you got to keep going on with him. Because there will be good days and there will be bad days. There will be times when you feel like dancing and times when you feel like crying but I tell you to lean on somebody and tell him you just gotta keep on trusting him David said there'll be times when father and mother forsake me there'll be times when it look like I'm by myself but, but can I tell you something I had faded uh, Literally, feel like I was losing my mind. 
<laughs> went in <laughs> the room and said it wasn't coming out no more. But, but, but something, uh, something hit me and said, uh, what is it that you're still believing for? And because I believed to see the goodness of the Lord, I couldn't die because my belief kept waking me up in the morning. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Joshua said, if you believe him, he'll extend your days. Hezekiah said, if you believe him, he'll add years to your life. I dare you to look at somebody and say, whatever you do, don't stop believing. Grab somebody else by the hand and tell them, whatever you do, don't stop believing. I, 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 I had fainted, except I believed. To see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then he gives you that 14th verse and we're getting out of here. He says, wait. I dare you to look at somebody and say, wait on the Lord. Look at somebody and say, you thought I was waiting on you. I ain't waiting on you, girl. Tell them I'm waiting on the Lord. I ain't waiting on the postman. I ain't waiting on the mortgage company. I, I wish I had somebody. I ain't waiting on the doctor. I ain't waiting on the lawyer. I ain't waiting on the judge. But I'm waiting on the Lord. Tell somebody, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen God. I'm through. I'm through, but I dare you to grab... One person by the hand, it's 12.30, we got to get out of here. And look them in the eyes and tell them, whatever you do, don't stop believing. There may be times uh, when pain is in your body. There may be times uh, when there's no money in the bank account. There may be times... Uh, when people are talking about you and lying on you and mistreating you and mishandling you. But, but, but Pastor, do you have any advice for me? Tell them, keep on believing. I want you to stand on your feet. I'm finished. Listen. I'm too, I'm too old to be trying to preach you happy. Look at somebody and say, whatever you do, keep on believing. I want you to grab one person by the hand, look them in the eyes. And tell them, look them in the eyes and be honest with them. Tell them, this has been a season where my faith has been under attack. Who am I talking to? Tell somebody, this has been a season. I'm not, I'm not saying that God is not blessing me. I'm not saying that God has not been good to me. He has been good. But, but, but my life is unbalanced. Where it's like everything over here is good. But I still got stuff that I'm believing him for. And to be honest, in some of those areas... I'm dealing with disappointment. It's not that I don't trust him. I know he's God. I love him with all my heart. But the truth is, every time I get ready to go to another level of faith, every time... I get ready to do something great in God. Every time God gives me a promise, the enemy keeps reminding me of the last time I was believing him for something. And it didn't work the way I wanted it to work. And I'll admit, as I hold your hand, I'll admit the problem is not with God. The problem's with me. I want my passion back. I need God to give me my joy back. I 
believe him, but I want to believe him like I used to. I want the kind of faith where I would walk out in the middle of the day and say, son, stand out still. <laughs> Moon, stand still over the valley. I want the kind of faith not just to heal the sick. I want the kind of faith that raises the dead. Because the truth is, there's some things that have died on the inside of me. And I need God to raise it. Squeeze that hand and tell him I need to shift. I'm trying to get back on the highway. I'm trying to, trying to accelerate the but every time it looks like I'm trying to get on, there's somebody that wants to block me. And I need to, I, need, I need to find the button so I can move from operating in the realm of the earth to operating in the realm of the spirit. I need to, I need to find out how to get there. And I, I, I want to do it before I leave here today. Squeeze that hand and ask somebody, will you help me? Now I want you to begin to pray for that person whose hand you're holding. Bandolo o sheke kariti andolo mosi kaledi amanshai. Somebody's at home and you don't have anybody there with you, but I dare you to just reach your hand toward that screen. God, it's she na na mando shai. He's about to touch you where you are. God's about to la honchi anda la masa. God's about to revive your faith. You are more than your last failure. You're more than your last disappointment. You are more than a season in God. God's about to bring you to a place, hallelujah, where everything's going to fall in line. God said, that's why I did what I did for you two weeks ago, three weeks ago, a month ago, because this day was coming. You needed to be reminded that I'm still God. That no matter how much it hurts, no matter how frustrated you become, and no matter how much you don't understand what you're going through, your life and times are in my hands. Pray just another minute or two for that person whose hand you're holding. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for you to revive faith in this room. I pray, God, that you would give us back the passion that we had when we first fell in love with you. Renew our strength. Renew our faith. I remember when we would believe you for anything. Hallelujah. Give us that kind of faith again. Hallelujah. Pray, pray. Give us faith to command the elements. Give us faith to speak to mountains and command mountains to be removed. Give us that kind of faith. I don't want just ordinary faith. I want the faith of God. Squeeze that hand and say, do it, God. Squeeze that hand and say, do it, God. Squeeze that hand and say, do it, God. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible for me. So, Father, we thank you that this week you're working on impossible situations. Hallelujah. We thank you that this week you're working. Hallelujah. Things that have seemed impenetrable, things that have seemed unmovable this week, you're working on our behalf. Come on, come on, pray, 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 pray. 30 more seconds. I feel God in here. Oh, 
Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I speak to every dream that has died. I speak to every vision that has died. I speak this morning to those places where you fainted. And I speak life. Pray, pray, pray. 15 more seconds. Pray. I speak life. That's your not. There it is. There it is. Yes, it's been hard, but you're still God. Honey, that is. I hear God say, tell you, don't allow the circumstances to move you. Don't allow the circumstances to change your confession. Somebody shout, I believe God. And when they turn up the threat, when they turn up the opposition, when they turn up the fight, look at somebody say, that's when I turn up my faith. Look at somebody say, turn up, turn up, turn up. Tell them that's when I turn up my faith. I believe God. Lift your hands and shout, I believe God. Come on, shout, I believe God. I believe God. Rohodi Shia. I'm believing him for my marriage. I'm believing him for my home. I'm believing him for my family. I'm believing him for my finances. I'm believing him for my friends. I'm believing. Somebody shout, I believe God. I had faith.